All right, so the previous project was a failure. We're gonna go ahead and knock the piece off that didn't weld. We're gonna take the piece of Damascus that's left and we're still gonna forge a cool bird and trout knife out of this piece that's left. All right guys, so I'm gonna try something a little bit different. Throughout the forging process, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing to the metal to manipulate it and why. So I'm starting out with a piece of metal that is shaped like this. Okay, now essentially what I want to end up with, this is too thick right here, so I really want it to be here and have a square or rectangle billet. There we go. That's what I want to end up with. Now there's a very specific way that I'm going to try to achieve this. The first portion of the forging, I'm going to take this material and reduce it this direction here. Okay, so I'm going to squish this down to here. So I'm going to focus on knocking this down. So I'll, I'll literally hammer down on the top and then I'll flip it on its side and hammer it out. And that's going to bring this down and stretch it out. Okay, so we've hammered this down and now we've got this right here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use, I like to use this hammer right here and this is a cross peen hammer or a diagonal peen hammer. And you could do this with uh, several other different types of hammers that have this style of head on them. I like the diagonal peen because it positions it properly for my wrist. So I'm going to come in here first and I'm going to, I want to draw my billet out longer. So I'm going to come in with this hammer and I'm going to strike it like this right here. So these blows will come in here like this. And I'm going to repeatedly hit this in this direction here. And that's going to draw the material out this way and this way. So it's going to stretch this section out. But I'm only going to work this portion right now because I'm going to add length to my billet. All right, now that we've done this and we've stretched that part of the build out, we condensed it and then we stretched it this way. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this same hammer and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna hit here and, and I'm gonna continue to hit with my hammer like this. And I'm gonna stretch this material out this way, right here. And that's gonna create a square off end, okay? Now, the only reason that I can do this, and I'm going to hit on both sides of the billet with the hammer oriented this way on all these functions I, I do, uh, all these processes, I'm going to hit the hammer on this side and I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to take a standard hammer like this and I'm going to planish it flat after I do that. So essentially, we took our piece that was shaped like this and we created a piece that was a third longer and rectangular. That's what we were able to create out of this piece by first we condensed this section down, then we stretched this section out this way, and then we stretched this section up this way to create a nice 
rectangle billet that's the same thickness from one side to the other. There's our billet right there. Now it wasn't big enough to make a knife out of before, but now it is. Now we can go over to the grinder. We're gonna flatten off both sides of this and go to town. Now what'll be really interesting with this is this started out as a twisted pattern billet. And a twisted pattern billet has this twist pattern right here that you see. Now that's the way the billet was after it was pattern welded and turned into a twisted pattern. However, with the way that I manipulated it with the hammer this direction, manipulated it with the hammer this direction, and then drew the whole thing out and planished it out, I highly doubt that we have a twisted pattern anymore, and this is probably gonna be more of a random pattern. But it will still make a really cool Damascus blade. We're making a burden trout knife, so I needed a knife, uh, a small billet so that I could fit the kind of knife design within this billet and this is going to work out great. So let's go ahead and, and move on to making a knife. So the first thing I'd like to do after I hammer out a billet like this is I hook up a magnet to it and I just grind my flats to see you know how far off I am on having a square perpendicular billet. You know you want your edges to be pr pretty square and you don't want there to be a whole lot of valleys and dips in this. So I'm just gonna come up and I'm gonna grind both sides and see where my greatest imperfections are in my billet. All right, here we are back at our paper. And conveniently, this just happened, my piece really fits in there. There it is, guys. That's the design. This is a, it will look smaller when it's finished, and I did decide to go with the harpoon point, which will be sharpened on this clip right here, and make it a little easier to do the finer detail stuff. So let's go ahead and cut it.
Well, here we are, guys. I had to deviate from the plan just slightly because I needed to make this fit in the hand better, so I widened this area right here. Um, that just makes it fit in the hand a little bit better. This is extremely thin stock, and I have zero faith that it won't warp during my quench. So I'm not going to grind bevels in it yet. I'm going to quench it and then put it between plates and the vise to keep it straight and see how that works. And then I'll go ahead and grind the bevels after I heat treat the blade. So I'm going to go ahead and heat treat it next. I suppose this could happen to the best of them and the mediocre of them like it did just me. Brought it out of the forge, hit the quench, and this is an incredibly thin knife. I dropped it and it broke. Super bummer. The knife just broke right there. Do 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 Well, time to grind the second one. This one's gonna be mono steel. Right there. So we're fresh out of the temper cycle. Everything's good to go. We're gonna go ahead and sand out the flats all the way from the back to the front right now because it's the easiest to do right now. Then we'll move into grinding our bevels, grind the top clip, and put on our handles. A lot of times on these thinner knives, this is how I do this to sand my flats. I just throw some paper on a surface plate, grab my magnet, and go to town. Now, cleaning this up is a good idea. Cleaning from here to the front, eh, it doesn't really matter. Most of this is gonna get ground off. The only part that I truly care about is this small section right here that's gonna be in front of the handle scale and between the bevel. So you have a primary bevel that comes back to here and then you'll have the kind of plunge line right here and then you have your scale and you have this small area here. That's the area that we need to make sure that we get 100% sanded out on both sides. Okay, here's where we're at. I got the blade. Got the bevels ground in and hand sanded and I ground in a top swedge here. Got this prepared. And I was supposed to go easy and simple with this. It's supposed to be a field knife. I was supposed to use simple materials, but I couldn't do it. So I've got some mammoth bark. This is the outermost layer of the mammoth tusk. Really cool. It's got a lot of color in it. Yeah, super neat. Um, I'll get this in better light after I get it glued up. But I decided to go with Mammoth Bark Bolsters up front, and I'm gonna do a stabilized sycamore for the back. It'll be kind of a tuxedo look. It'll be dark and then light, and then I'm gonna use dark pins and the light wood, and I think it'll really make the whole thing pop. So, clean it up with acetone, and I'll do the glue up. Hey guys, I've gone ahead and got the Mammoth Bark attached. It's pinned and everything lines up from side to side, which is what we're looking for. Now I've got, I've went through all my different handle materials and this is what I've selected. And there's a reason. I really like this knot here. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna get that knot to lay right there on the, on the handle. So the knot is right in the middle of this section here. And if you see the growth rings of the tree come out from right here. So the knot is in the very center. So I think it'll be pretty cool to kind of throw rings out from the back of the knife down. So that's what we're gonna do. I've gone ahead and marked out uh, the area that I'm gonna cut off of these scales. These scales are gonna be really hard to use. I've had these for a long time. They're not even, they're not square. They're, there's nothing about these that's gonna be easy. Uh, these were some of the first pieces that I ever stabilized and I learned a lot 
through the process of stabilizing wood. These stabilized perfectly, but through um, heat curing the scales, they warped and at least I left them thick enough to where I can get a good usable piece out of here. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out, square these up, get them dimensionally correct, get them cut to the size that I want, and I'll go ahead and mount them and glue them, and uh, then I'll bring you guys back. Let's get to a shaping. Here we go. My favorite part of making a knife. Mammoth. And this is a spalted maple. Gorgeous spalted maple. Go ahead and just let that soak in across all of it. Now, I set out to show you guys a forging video on, you know, how to manipulate metal under the hammer, and I did that, and I made a knife for you, and it broke. Now, it's not your fault that this knife broke. So I went ahead, and I took the exact same design, I laid it on a piece of steel, and I went ahead and made a knife out of it so that you guys could see a finished product. And I want to bring you in close to show you this cool knife that I just made. What a cool knife. It worked out great. You guys came to see me manipulate metal under a hammer. I did that. I made a knife. I failed. I broke it. So that wasn't your fault. I decided I wanted to show you a finished knife in the video. So I went ahead and cut one out of some mono steel with the exact same design. This is exactly what that knife would have looked like, except it would have had a Damascus pattern on the blade. This turned out super, super good. I like the mammoth ivory that I used right here, this mammoth bark. It, it uh, really complements this knife well. I love how that polishes out. It gives you some super cool color in there. I also got this uh, knot right here in the tree with the growth rings that passes right through the handle. It's book matched so you can see it on both sides. Really digging how this turned out. It's real nice and thin. It's fast. The clip, I'm, I'm made it so that you can put your finger up here, guide it through an animal, and this is sharp on both sides, so it can cut this way or this way through the connective tissue. Really liking how this one turned out. So thanks for sticking with me, guys. It's not your fault that I dropped the knife and broke it. I definitely wanted to show you a finished product. So here you go. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll definitely put a video right here, actually sorry, right here for you to go and see next. Go check out one of my other videos. Thanks for coming guys.